could get into a relationship with a total prick. I'll turn you into a terrible person too. No, seriously. I'm telling you, the worst person I've ever been in my life was when I dated a selfish prick. Because you start compromising more and more your values, your morals. You start throwing more people under the bus. And let's talk about it in this story from Slate. Until I start my own column, which is going to be soon, I promise. I'm just going to react to other people's columns. This one's called, We Suddenly Have My Stepson Every Weekend. Please, now! Uh-oh, I already don't like you. Now, before I get into it, uh, y'all know I've talked about stepmothers a lot. And I think that they get screwed over so much. Because, you know, Disney is all like, they're able! And then a lot of times, uh, stepmothers end up doing all of the work for, fa like, deadbeat dads who don't want to do it. Um, and, you know use their own money to pay for the kids, put in all this stuff, and then in an instant can lose all of it because uh, men will literally just like get anyone to raise their kids. Because <laughs> they don't want a parent, they just want a legacy. Uh, and their legacy is abandonment and um, unhealed trauma. Anyway, having said all that, there are lots of really selfish, terrible stepmoms. Sometimes it's because of their own stuff, their own... Um, Refusal to heal or maybe not even knowing they need to. Lots of people, including moms, stepmoms, anybody, can be a narcissist, terrible person. But this one, to me, is a reminder that this woman might um, have had a different path if she hadn't got involved with this man. So being with the wrong man can literally bring out all of the worst of you. <laughs> all that pick me -ism, toxic boy mom, all cool girl stuff. And um, it'll, it'll amplify it and make it worse. Which is why if you are not in a good place, don't date men. They will literally make the things that need to be healed worse. You will not heal from dating those men. You will get worse. They're, they're just going to make all that healing harder. So this woman writes in, I'm a stepmom in a blended family. My husband has a five-year-old son, Corey, from his first marriage. And together we have a five-year-old daughter and a three-year-old son. Okay, let's do some math right here. Five-year-old son from first wife, five-year-old daughter in current relationship. That makes me think that, um, I don't know if she knew he was married when she got involved with him, but this sounds like he cheated on his pregnant wife to be with her. Maybe not. Maybe she wasn't. Pre but this timeline says a lot, okay? So right out of the gate, we know that this was probably an affair. We used to have Corey on Sunday afternoons, but his mom took a new job where he started kindergarten and pushed for custody. Changes. Parenting two kids all week is exhausting. And now we have Corey. Friday through Sunday every week too. See, now this is something uh, I need. It sounds like this woman does not want to be a stepmom. This is why I tell y'all, do not get involved with uh, single dads <laughs> or married dads because you are going to have to deal with their children whether you like them or not. A lot of your income is going to go towards those children. And that man is always going to have, hopefully if he's a good dad, uh, loyalty to that child first. You will never come first. You will never come first. And if you do, then that means he's a terrible dad. So do not get involved with these men who have kids unless you are, if you want that freedom of not being the most important and you want your own life. Some people are like, that's a great arrangement. But uh, since she had kids with them right away, my guess is she wanted a family. She wanted to be wife number one. This man comes with baggage and that baggage's name, Corey. This poor child is now p pulled into this dynamic. So, um, I'm sorry, <clears throat> but you can't just like expect to be with a man who's a good dad or a dad, a present father, but expect him to screw over his kid from the marriage that he cheated on. <laughs> like, Corey has a lot of trouble every time he switches over from his mom's house to ours. I wonder why that is. A five-year-old having trouble dealing with dad just being gone all of a sudden and now having a whole new family and uh, this other woman that mom probably hates. And even when moms try to hide this, even when they don't say a single bad word about that mom, which takes a lot of discipline, like a lot of self-restraint, the kids know. I don't remember my mom ever bad-mouthing um, the other woman, woman my dad had an affair with, uh, or even my dad. 
It's the tone. They can literally be like, was she there? You know, like, or they'd be like, was she there? Like, the kids are so, so intuitive. Kids speak nonverbal. Like, they, 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 they observe our body language, the tone. They know things before other adults know. Why would they not? Their survival depends on everything this person does. So even when, when parents really try to hide it, the kids usually know. But sometimes the parents don't hide it. They're like, ah! So yeah, Corey is having a hard time with this new arrangement because dad decided to get his wet in someone else. Look at this. He also tattles that his stepsister isn't following the rules. It's because his mom is a helicopter parent. While our house is about independence building. Okay, maybe she is a helicopter parent. Or maybe the man you're married to may paint a certain picture to pit the two of you against each other or just to make his wife that he left, sorry, ex-wife that he left, look like the bad guy. She's a helicopter parent. I want to know where she gets this idea from. Maybe it's her own defense mechanism that she labeled her this. But um, if the stepmom hates the mother, that's usually because the man is either a liar or a coward. He's either lying about his ex or he's too much of a coward to confront her and deal with her. So then the stepmom has to deal with her. Men love to triangulate women. Men hate conflict so much that they're just like, oh, blah, 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 blah. and then you're like, God, why is she? Like they pit us against each other all the time. This sounds like some of this is coming from her because she's like, I am all about teaching independence. She's a helicopter parent. He's clingy and needs help with everything. And the weekend is just miserable for everyone. Okay, again, uh, this child went through a major trauma, which is a divorce uh, that involved cheating. And, you know, my dad left when I was four. I don't remember this, but apparently I was found... Um, multiple times in tears, blaming myself for it, hiding. Like, a, a five-year-old doesn't know what is happening. They just know that mom and dad hate each other, and then there's this other lady, and then there's a brother, a sister now, like, come on, or like two kids. But this woman signed up for this. She signed up for this. She's pissed that she has to deal with this thing she signed up for. Now, Corey's aunt takes him after school four days a week, but not on Friday. Oh, well, how helpful. What a helpful aunt. This means we have to arrange once a week after school care for him, which is expensive and inconvenient. And I usually end up having to be the one who leaves work early for pickup because that care ends at 4 45 p.m. Exhausted! Exhausted by this. And the full weekend of managing our two kids plus stupid Corey that comes afterward, including driving him to activities like soccer games that his mom is happy to sign him up for, then they didn't leave us to deal with. Oh, you mean Corey has lots of things going on so that you don't have to hang out with this kid that you hate? Well, aren't you lucky? He's entertained by soccer and other things and you just drop him off because uh, otherwise you'd be hanging out with him and you don't even like Corey because he's needy and clingy. Also, I want to know why is the husband picking up this kid? It's his kid. Why, why are you doing all this? Are you really mad at the mom for taking a job so that she has more financial independence? Also so that Corey can see his dad more than, what, one afternoon a, a week? Like, that is nothing. That is the most ridiculously small amount of custody. Like, a one afternoon a week? How are you supposed to have a relationship with a parent that you see that little? And now Corey's actually going to see his dad several days a week. And the aunt stepping in, taking the kid, picking up from school. All you got to do is hang out with this kid a few days a week. But why aren't, why isn't the husband driving him to soccer? Huh? Why isn't he, why isn't he picking him up from school? Are you really mad at the aunt and the mom, the way we've been trained to hate other women? Or are you mad at your piece of crap husband? who uh, won't even parent his own kid. And this is what I'm talking about. Stepmoms get screwed. Even the stepmoms who sign up for this stuff, even the stepmoms who maybe have cheated to get these men, they end up suffering the consequences of his actions. But he never does. He never does. All the stuff, all, the mom, the stepmom, the aunt, are doing all this work. What is dad doing? Oh, he has a job. He makes money. Wow. Driving Corey around, taking care of Corey, feeding Corey is a job. But dad doesn't want that job. 
I need Corey's aunt at the very least to talk, take him on Friday to make it fair. Okay, you're borderline queen baby here. You sound like a queen baby. I talk about king babies all the time. You're a queen baby by association. But she refuses because she blames me for her sister's divorce. Oh, there we go. You did cheat. You did cheat. <laughs> what should they should? Of course she blamed this right there. Just the timeline plus this means they cheated. Right? Like I am like a 99.9999999% sure about that now. When I asked the husband to talk to his ex and her sister about making the childcare arrangements fairer, he said he'd do it. But then... <laughs> suspense. Who wants to guess what happened? Oh, made excuses and never did it. Shocker! Is, wow, that sounds like just men. If there's one thing that we have all learned on the internet, is that men are unreliable and they make promises and they don't do things. And every time they don't do things, that adds to us having to do them. So he doesn't want to do this. He makes excuses, never does it. So now guess what? You have to do it. Back to what I said before. These men will either triangulate you right through pitting you against each other because uh they just love that or because at the very least they're cowards he's a coward sorry Mose, but you know he interrupted my video so i could feed you uh just now he's gonna go to bed he's gonna pass out <laughs> okay here we go i know the divorce was unfriendly mm, that may be an understatement i bet Corey would use a different word and so would his mom but it's been nearly five years. Just get over it, lady. It's been nearly five years and I'm tired of dealing with this. Oh boy, you've only begun. See, this is what I'm talking about. Just cause you won the man, just cause he picked you, even though he wasn't even available, you can't just like, uh, now it's all over. Bye bye, kid from the other marriage. This is never going away. Corey, she's gonna be taking care of Corey the rest of her life, probably. Oh, I'm sorry. Until Corey's like 18. And then all those that mon the money and resources and, and love, if she ever gives that, she'll be given resources and money and time, right? Because men are gold diggers and they are going to literally exploit her for all of her labor. She may not give love to Corey because she hates this kid. Because Corey is a way, hating Corey helps her not have to deal with the fact that she married a piece of trash. She's got two kids with this man. For her to admit that she's married to trash would be too much for her. So she's gonna hate Corey and that stupid ex for the rest of her life when really the culprit is her husband. See what I mean? This woman may have had a different moral compass, but all it takes is one man to bring out all the pick me in you and then make you the villain. <laughs> like you, you, you're the villain now, lady. I'm sorry. You are. As long as you are taking out your frustration with your husband on his child, uh, you're the villain. Even if you did not know this man was married when you got involved, you're still you're the villain now, right? And then when Corey is an adult, he's probably never going to talk to you again. So all that money was for nothing. Corey would benefit from from more predictability with his aunt. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what you care about predictability. Maybe uh, Corey wouldn't have to worry about it if he, uh, if you hadn't gotten involved with a married man. His life was very predictable before you entered it. I also think if he wasn't scheduled for weekend activities, he'd become more independent. What is your idea of independence? I don't know. Sounds like Corey is playing sports and having like, what, what, what do you mean? I can't get any support for any of this. Again, it's your husband you should be mad at, not this aunt or his ex that he cheated on. How do I claim my weekends back? You can't. Corey is a reminder that you are the other woman, the side dish. And that's why you hate Corey. Corey reminds you that you were not the first number one and that you had an affair. That's what it is. A lot of women who hate their stepkids, it is their own self-hatred that they are projecting onto these kids the same way men who hate themselves project all that self-hatred onto us. That's why they're so jealous of us. That's why they try to humble us because they're like, God, mm, I'll humble you. I'll cage you. Well, overworked stepmom, I got some news for you. Until you can look at yourself and look at your husband for who he is, 
uh, you are going to continue in your villain era. Doesn't mean that you don't love your kids. Doesn't mean you're a terrible person. It means that you are literally becoming more and more selfish the longer you're associated with this man because you cannot, you cannot face the truth about your relationship and how you got here. And then when this husband leaves her for another woman and now she's stuck with two kids and probably still taking care of Corey, now, you know, wouldn't be surprised. Men have some audacity. Then, maybe, maybe then she will understand that this man turned her into a person that she never thought she'd be. That is one of the worst parts of being being in, involved with the wrong men, uh, which, you know, if they're selfish, which most are, if they haven't dealt with any of their, you know, patriarchal conditioning of being entitled to everything and not seeing us as human, if they're selfish and if they haven't dealt with their past or any trauma or any of their daddy issues or mommy issues, these men will literally detour our whole lives and the person that we could have been it, that doesn't exist anymore we become that was the worst part of dating that hobo who ended up being abusive and all that other stuff i did not even recognize myself and that was like less than a year i was with that man i could not believe how one by one i betrayed myself i also betrayed my friends. You're really selfish when you're with men like this. You become very selfish. You can't show up for friends. You uh, b lie and manipulate and you cover for these jerks. And you know, like I've said before, pick me's, which all, every woman under patriarchy is on the pick me spectrum because you literally can't survive without doing some of this on some level. But in the end, those of us who continue on that pick me route and get worse with time, we are more dangerous than the very men we cover for. You can't convince me. We may not do the violence, but we enable these men to do the violence and we clean up their mess and make it easy for them to do their violence. They could not do, screw over everyone without their enablers. They just couldn't. It's teamwork makes the nightmare dream work. So let's see this response. I am trying, really trying to be sympathetic. But it's hard for me to cheer you on, particularly since that cheerleading would come at Corey's expense. Boom. This is a five-year-old whose father left him and his mother. For Corey's entire life, his dad has had another family, including children he seems to be more devoted to. Oh my God. Okay. See, I even messed this up. I was talking about what it's like to be a four-year-old dealing with this. This child doesn't even know what it... I forgot. I did my math wrong. This kid has known nothing but... This weird situation with this lady who seems to hate him and his never seeing his dad and then his mom parenting all alone and his dad being more invested in these other kids for some reason. Corey gets to spend limited time with his dad one afternoon a week for almost five years or five years. And his dad's second wife makes it very clear that having him around more than those few hours once a week is a burden. Why wouldn't he act out? Okay. See right here, a lot of us have this burden story, like a burden or origin story, which then makes it hard for us to connect with others, hard for us to ask for help. I've talked to y'all all the time about how my burden story is literally like the thing that ruined most good things in my life and almost ruined other things. I just told y'all last week about, I didn't, I almost didn't invite anyone to our wedding because I didn't want to burden them with having to hit a button on Zoom because maybe they, ah, ah, ah. this burden story, is what ruins people's lives. And the stepmom is totally like feed, like, like the fire of I'm a burden. I think most humans I know have a little bit of a burden story, but some of us are on like on the I'm a burden spectrum. Uh, actually, that's not true. I don't even know if my husband has that story. He, he, he never questioned that his parents and his whole family loved the crap out of him, but he had other players, you know, teachers and other thing and patriarchy. <laughs> you know, try to beat him down. So he's had to do a lot of work on himself still. But Corey, Corey probably already hates himself. Corey's going to be a nightmare to date if he dates women. So when you married your husband, you became a stepmom, however reluctantly. You're having two kids with Corey's dad doesn't negate that his or your responsibility for his other child. What did you think was going to happen here? Huh? What did you think was going to happen to Corey? I love the way they're calling this out. And again, a change in custody arrangement could have been great for Corey. He gets to see his dad. And this could have been an opportunity for you to step up and be a real stepmom and really get to know him and love him, to include him, include him in the full life of the family that you've made 
with his dad. Instead, you focused on the inconvenience and expense of finding childcare for him uh, on the one weekday afternoon his aunt can't or maybe even just won't. But it isn't her responsibility. It's his parents, says as in all three of his parents. Exactly. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm an aunt and I would do anything for my nieces and my nephew. I jump at any opportunity to hang out with them. But that, like, the aunt can't. And, his, and this, this stepmom's like, oh, you're the parent. Just because you did not push him out of your bar bar doesn't mean that you are not his parent. You signed up for this. But focusing on the misery of having to look after all three kids on the weekend. That is her focus. And this is how uh, as, when, women who hate their husbands or are mad at their husbands or like n won't look at the truth about their husbands who take it out on their kids end up being really attached to the victim narrative, right? Like everyone is the problem except for you and the man, the, 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 the D bag that you attach yourself to. And this is what I'm telling you. Do not hitch your wagon to trash a train full of tra a wagon of trash because you're going straight to the landfill baby oh my god look at your cheek <laughs> he's in serious food look at his cheek sorry i'm a toxic boy dog mom you even begrudge the poor kid any scheduled weekend activity because getting him to them is another inconvenience to you but again why isn't the dad driving him or is he? And you're just complaining. This is what I'm talking about. When, when you are attached to a man who sucks and you will not look at that and you will, will, will not face that, then you become a, a victim to everyone. She even sees herself as a victim of Corey, a five-year-old, the most innocent person in this entire thing. And she's like, God, Corey's just trying to make my life hard. Eh, he's needy. And clingy and he does these stupid sparks on Saturday. Of course, Corey is clingy. Of course, the transitions are hard for him. I'm relieved your husband didn't do as you asked, though he is not at all blameless in this situation. And this is where, again, I am giving this stepmom a really hard time. Given that this man is a cheater and he just abandoned his first family and now he's only hanging out with Corey one afternoon a week until he was forced to hang out with him more because mom got another job. This man is trash. This man is absolutely not blameless. The point of this video, because I give men a really hard time on my channel, is that men associating with these men, settling for these men, chasing after unavailable men, which includes married men, because you feel like maybe it'll heal some sort of trauma when your dad was watching football your whole life and didn't want to be with you. If you can get this other unavailable man to give you time and attention and pick you because your dad didn't pick you or whatever origin story is behind all this, no matter how awful these men are, if you are with them, you will start to do awful things because you have to cover for them, because you have to put up with them, because you have to make excuses for them. You have to bite your tongue. You have to pretend that you're okay with situations you're not okay with. And instead of dealing directly with the trash that you hitched your wagon to, you blame Corey, a five-year-old, the ex-wife, who got abandoned by her husband and betrayed and cheated on and left a parent alone and that woman's sister. One of the hardest things to do is face really ugly truths about yourself and the person, people that you love sometimes. And being unwilling to do that sends you farther and farther and farther on, on your or our or whoever's uh, villain journey. We become the villain in someone else's life when we will not look at that truth, that really hard truth. And when we blame everyone else for our situation instead of ourselves and our, our part in that and the person who started it. But who knows, maybe she went after this man, but still he was married. He should have said no when you proposed to tell his ex-wife and ex-sister-in-law that they, were being, they weren't being fair about parenting duties instead of pretending to agree with you, making excuses, and then not doing it as instructed. Exactly, like, the only thing they're calling out this man for who cheated and abandoned his family is for being a coward. Because this is what he's doing. He's just being a coward. Uh, oh, well... That's best case scenario. Just being a lying, manipulating, um, deflecting uh, uh -huh, is really what this is too. 
If you can't get it together to care for this child in the way he deserves, the way every child deserves, you're not only harming Corey, here we go, you're showing your two biological children who you love more how to be unloving, withholding, and cruel. Bingo. You are the wicked stepmother in the Disney movies. We know Disney loves to kill a parent and we know Disney loves to make women, who uh, stepmoms and child-free women and older women, the villains, uh, but you're playing, you, th this is what you're becoming. Of course, Disney never blames the dad. Why did Cinderella's mom die? What did you do to her? Why is she sick? Did you unalive her through her nervous system? Cinderella's daddy? Like there's all these, anyway, sorry. I should deconstruct that movie because I hate that one too. As to your calm weekends, you'll get them back someday, but now is not that someday. And to be honest, uh, n n probably not the next uh, 13 years. Until Corey is out of the house, he is her problem. And I say problem for a reason because that's what she sees him as, a problem, a burden, a reminder of her own shame and Corey here is going to get radicalized on YouTube and probably will fall into the Jordan Peterson red pill pipeline and then he's going to, and he's probably going to become his dad because that's the only male figure in his life is that piece of crap. So a dad like that, a cheating liar and a pick me stepmom is setting Corey up to fail and also exploit and probably even abuse women, even if it's not physical, financial, emotional. Insecure men, insecure men are so dangerous to women and poor Corey, he's already on a fast track to insecure king baby. I really hope his mom puts him in therapy and provides him with a loving environment because uh, spending time with dad and a woman who hates him, well, let's hope Corey goes to therapy and not to use therapy speak to manipulate women and become his dad. Don't. Get involved with single dads, okay? They'll ruin your life. The more you know.